Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And last week I had such a great response to the radial gradient adjustment layer in Photoshop, but I also had a ton of questions. I had, Blake, why wouldn't you do this in Adobe Camera Raw? Why wouldn't you do this in Lightroom? Or why wouldn't you use this in On One Photo Raw? They all have different places. Why wouldn't you just use it here or there? Or is this just a vignette? Well, the thing about this is I have to break it down and I have to show you in a video tutorial because I was explaining this a lot via email. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the radial gradient adjustment layer in Photoshop, the radial filter in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom, and the radial local adjustment that is an on one photo roll and talk about the benefits of each one and why you would use them and where you would use them. The crazy thing is here is on one photo raw offers an awesome radial gradient adjustment that I think you're really going to like because it's a hybrid of all of them. So let's go and check it out. So let's go ahead and look at Photoshop first. So this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to use the radial gradient again, because I already did that. We're just going to talk about the benefits and what you can do with the radial gradients in Photoshop. So the radial gradient in Photoshop, if we come down here and we go to gradient, we can fill this with the radial gradient. So I'm going to hit this right here. This little style is going to be radial. And here I can obviously move and place this wherever I want. So here's the thing about this. You can change the size and you can change um, how big the feather is, but you can't actually change the shape in Photoshop, which is important to note because in the other ones you can change the shape. So in Photoshop, you're stuck with basically a circle, okay? Now, on, on the fly at any time, you can change this to a linear gradient or a reflected gradient or an angle gradient. Typically, the ones you're gonna use most are gonna be reflected, linear, and radial. That's a really cool thing that you can do that in Photoshop. So we'll go ahead and press okay. Here we have access to our uh, soft light, our blending modes. That's important. Blending modes are critical here because what blending modes do is they allow us to blend in those colors in certain ways. Now, you're gonna see that in other versions, we can't quite do that. I can also change the opacity here. And if we need to, we can double click this and we can change the color of this to just about any color scheme we want based off of the gradients that we have, which makes this extremely powerful. I mean, just look at the difference between what this looks like and what this looks like with the simple usage of the radial gradient. We can move this anywhere we want to spotlight, showcase, push back, or whatever we want to do. And we can press OK, and we've got it good there. Now, in this little form I've created here, you can see the breakdown. In Photoshop, can we change the opacity? Yes. Can we change the blend mode? Yes. Can we use protection measures like blend if, if we wanted to? Absolutely. Can we modify the tone and contrast within that gradient? Not necessarily, not easily. Can we change the size and position? Yes. Can we modify the feathering? Yes. If you go into the gradient, you can modify that. Can we change the shape? We can change how big and how small it is, but we can't change oval versus round. Okay. Can we change from radial to graduated? Yes. Can we invert the effect? Yep, right there in the gradient editor, we can change the color, we can have multiple colors, and we can use the mask features to blend that as we see fit, and we can make very precise custom color controls. Is it suitable for white balance though? I would say no. And the reason why I say that is because now we're gonna look at Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. Press Command or Control J on this background layer. And to get into Adobe Camera Raw as a filter, I'm gonna press Control Shift A, which is very much the same thing. Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw kind of work off of the same engine. If I come over here to the radial filter, you can see that I can create whatever size and shape radial filter I want. If I press and hold shift, it holds it and sticks it as a circle and I can move this around. Now the big difference here, the big, big difference here between Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom is this, is that look at all the controls that we have here. We can make this, whether we want this to be on the inside of that radial filter, so the spot changes based on the inside or the outside, which is basically an inversion process. We can change the feathering, so that's good. But look at the controls we get. We get exposure controls. This is where people think that this is a lot like vignetting, and it's kind of like vignetting, but the cool thing here that you get here that you don't get in Photoshop is the ability to adjust the tonal controls. So exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows. You don't get any protection measures here though, not 
quite. I mean, you can, I guess, if you use this as a, a, a layer that you could put into your, um, into your workflow in Photoshop, you could quite possibly use blending modes if you wanted to like soft light and opacity, but within Adobe Camera Raw and within Lightroom, you cannot change the opacity of this radio uh, filter that we're using here. What you can do though, is you can increase and decrease the intensity based off of the exposure that you're giving it. So while we're not necessarily adjusting the opacity, because this does get brighter and darker it's in adjusting the intensity of it it is suitable for white balance though because here we can change the white balance of everything that's on the outside or inside of this uh, radio filter that we have selected the other cool thing here is that we get sharpness noise reduction so we can reduce the noise on just the area that's on the outside or sharpen just the area on the inside we can change the saturation of the area on the outside and the area on the inside so there's a lot of interesting features that are built right into adobe camera raw and lightroom versus in photoshop so the big takeaway and the big difference here is that i see the radio filter in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom more as a workflow step to spotlight and highlight things, not necessarily on a crazy artistic level, uh, because you saw just how much color control we have over the radial gradient in Photoshop. For artistic control, that's where I would do that. In Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, this is more for, um, I guess, like getting all the finite details of that area. I can't do exposure control in Photoshop, but I can right here in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, which does give me some more options and some different options. I can change the color within reason here. We can change the color with the temperature and the tint, and we can also come down here and add and modify a color that we want to be on that outside and change the intensity of that color, which is actually a pretty neat feature that's built into Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom because that can give us that more artistic type of feel, but it still isn't quite to that to the level of Photoshop where we're actually using complementary colors and the law of color theory to inverse where the eye goes based on the colors that we're placing on there. You have a lot of control over exposure and contrast here, not a lot of control over color. So I'm going to go and press OK, and you're going to see how this applies itself to our image uh, because it is Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. It's right here in the layers. So let's look at our little sheet, our little cheat sheet we have here and look at the differences between what's going on in Lightroom and Photoshop or Adobe Camera Raw. And we look at the major differences here is that we can't change opacity, we can't change blend modes, we can't use protection measures, but we can modify tone and contrast and we can change from an oval to a round, okay? Um, in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom, we can't change from the radial gradient to the graduated filter on the fly. You can switch over to the graduated filter, but it doesn't bring the settings from the radio filter over. So kind of a downfall, but not that big of a deal. Um, you can have multiple colors in the same gradient with Photoshop. I guess you could quite possibly do it in Lightroom, but you'd have to do two radio gradients, one for the center, one for the outside. So you can't really do it with the one layer like we're expecting to see here. Um, you can use brushes and masks in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw because there is a brush feature there. So you can brush things away that you don't want them to be there. Um, you can select precise custom colors in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom, but only one because you saw that color aspect that we could add a color there. And it is suitable for adjusting the white balance outside of your image. Now, what I want to show you is I'm going to take a dive on over into On One Photo Raw because the interesting thing about On One Photo Raw is it's kind of the perfect hybrid between Photoshop and Lightroom when it comes to the radio filter. So if I duplicate this background layer by pressing Command or Control J, I can go to Filter, I can go to On One, and it doesn't matter if I open up Effects or Develop because it's actually in the Local Adjustments tab. So when I open this up, you're going to see in here that we have what's called local adjustments and we have our regular adjustments. So the regular adjustments, the overall settings are going to be in here. When we hop over to local adjustments here, this is built on a mask. So if I go over here to this local option right here and I change the shape up here to center or edges, let's say I just do edges and press the button there. Notice how the outside edges get whatever settings I have set over there in on one photo raw right here in this local adjustment tab. So I can modify the exposure. I can modify the contrast, the highlights, the lights and darks that are happening on that outside edge. I've got a really nice way of feathering this. Look at that. That's a brilliant way of doing feathering. I kind of like that more so than I, I did in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. 
and I can make this a perfect circle or an oval. Uh, we can also modify the details on the outside and the inside of that. And we also have our color controls here for modifying our tint, our temperature, our saturation, and our vibrance. But on one photo raw goes another step. It goes another level uh, beyond what Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom do, which gives us the ability to adjust the opacity. So it's not just the intensity based on the exposure, it's the intensity based on the opacity, which is really, really powerful and really critical when you're doing these kinds of things. Now, if I also go in here, in this gear icon, I open this up, guess what that opens me up to? It opens me up to blend modes and blending options. So if I were to make this really dark and then go into my blending options and say soft light, notice how we have all the same blending options that we had in Photoshop, but right here in On One Photo Raw. And if I say apply to, I can come to my highlights, my shadows, I can apply this to only very specific areas of my image, and I can adjust the protection measures and say, you know what, don't make that affect my highlights. Watch my highlights get protected up there, or don't affect my shadows, or don't affect my skin, or in the landscape world, the midtones. But I still have all of those tools here, so I can bring the color up, uh, I can bring the tint up, and just kind of do something kind of crazy with this. But then if I go in here and change this to multiply, or overlay, or soft light, or hard light, I I get all these different controls for what's happening with that local adjustment. The other really cool thing about this is that, let's say I don't want this to be radial anymore. I want it to be uh, a gradient that comes down from the top. I can quickly and easily switch right over on the fly because look what it's doing here. It's just creating a mask, a temporary mask in this local adjustment. So maybe I like the way that's making my clouds look, but I don't like the way it's affecting the whole image. I can go ahead and just Boom, plop it on over and change it from a gradient to edges to center to a reflected gradient. So we get more of that reflected look over the water like that and over the city. If I bring this down, it's got that reflected look going on from the center on out. And obviously these, these settings are really strong, but you can see how I can affect my image with this and drop that opacity a little bit and really make a pretty nice looking uh, reflected gradient or edges or the center or a regular gradient. So there's a lot of powerful things that are right here in On One Photo Raw. So now that that's all done and processed, we can pop on over to our little uh, spreadsheet that we've created here. I spreadsheet everything. If you know me in my business, I've got spreadsheets for spreadsheets for spreadsheets. But On One Photo Raw can change the opacity. It can change the blend modes. It can use protection measures. Unlike Photoshop, it can modify your tone and your contrast controls. Um, it also can change from a radial gradient uh, on the fly. So that has one up on that Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. Uh, it can change the color with your temperature uh, adjustments. It can't necessarily do it precisely like you can in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw or Photoshop. And it cannot have multiple colors like you can in Photoshop, but it can brush and mask because it's right there on a mask anyway, and it is suitable for white balance. So it's almost like the perfect hybrid between Photoshop and Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. Really cool stuff. And the reason why is because on one photo raw on every one of their layers, whether you're in a local adjustment or you're in effects, all those layers have all the blending options that you would normally have attributed right there in Photoshop. So that to me is one of the best things about uh, on one photo raw. So now the big question is, well, what do you use and where do you use them? Well, it's a radial gradient. I mean, it's not the, the craziest tool on the entire planet. It can do some really interesting things to your workflow and it can do some really interesting things to your images, but it's not like it's just something you're going to use on every single photograph. Okay. I just want to take the time to answer some of those questions in a video as to why I would be using uh, the radial gradient in Photoshop versus Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom and on one photo raw. And the big difference in Photoshop for me is the fact that in Photoshop, I think it's more of an artistic thing. Um, it's more for that artistic effect phase of your workflow. Whereas in Adobe Camera Raw, Lightroom, and On One Photo Raw, it kind of fits anywhere into your workflow and is more for the technical things like your tones, your contrast, and things like that. You can do some artsy things with it, but not to the degree or the extent that you can in Photoshop. So when push comes to shove, they all have some really great benefits. No matter where you're using that radial gradient, you can get some benefits from it. They're just gonna operate a little bit differently and give you a slightly different effect depending on where you're using them. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. And I hope you learned something about the variations of the radial gradient and where and when to use them. Thanks again. Have a good one.